Do you have some low quality videos that you want to upscale because of their tiny resolution? <laughs> Well, I've got the solution for you on how to maximize and get the biggest video possible. That's huge. So I'm not selling any pills or anything like that. But what I am trying to show you guys is a way you can upscale your video to 2048 using Stable Diffusion and a couple other free tools that have been around for a long, long time. No spyware. The main reason I wanted to do this tutorial was because I did a tutorial on thin plate spline motion modeling or TPSM, which is nerd speak for animating a 2D image using a driving video or basically any video. So it produced some pretty amazing results, but it also produced some really bad video. Like I'm talking about 256 by 256. And that's like back in the days when we had like Nokia phones and there was this really bad camera on the phone and we had one game. It was like that snake game that you make in your computer science class or something like that. Also, it was kind of cool because you could change the cover and then it would like light up or there was like different covers for it. And everybody was so excited, you know, about a cover. And that was about the extent of customization back in the days. But uh, I digress. Another Another reason I wanted to make this tutorial is because I went out there to look for a free option for upscaling and there was a lot of BS out there. So I'm going to show you some of the BS and, and see if, so you can see for yourself on uh, these free 4K upscaling methods and none of them show what the quality is of their video that they produce, which is kind of important, right? So before we get started, I'm going to show you what my upscaling does and you can decide for yourself if you want to do this. So that's some of the quality that you can expect from this method. But I got to warn you ahead of time that it's going to take a lot of gigabytes. Um, so there's going to be a lot of bandwidth going back and forth. For a one minute video, you can expect to use up about five gigabytes, two to five, depending on the quality that you're really trying to get here. If you're trying to do the full 2048, you're going to use about five gigabytes for a minute. So just keep that in mind. And also when I'm explaining it, it might seem complicated, but trust me, it's very, very easy. It's just basically putting in some folder names and messing with stable diffusion a little bit and uh, changing some settings on some software. And that's about it. And every all the software I use is free and everything is listed in the description. So you don't got to go find it. Just go to the description and download everything and install it. All right, let's get into the software that we're going to download and install and what we're going to use them for. If you already have something that'll do this, then you can use that instead. The first one is VLC player. And so we're going to take our bad video and throw it into VLC player and it's going to cut it up into thousands of images. And I know that sounds difficult, but really it's just changing a setting and then playing the video. Next up is stable diffusion. And if you follow me, uh, you already have stable diffusion installed probably. But if you don't, in my description, I have a tutorial in there on how to install it. So check that one out. We're going to use stable diffusion to upscale our images through batch processing. And we'll also, if you did the TPSM thing and there's some artifacting on the face, you can also do GFP GAN to make it look even better. So the next piece of software that we're going to need is Krita. So Krita is a pretty cool tool. So it's a photo editing software similar to Photoshop, but it's open source. So there's a lot of people doing some pretty cool things with it. They're creating some really neat plugins. And one example is a stable diffusion plugin. So you can actually run stable diffusion right off the Krita app, which is pretty damn cool. The last thing we're going to need is FFmpeg. So we're not actually going to install this. We're just going to download it, extract it, and it's good to go. So we're just going to have to make Krita find the exe file for this you can put it anywhere but i just put it somewhere where you can remember all right so i'm going to show you the first method which was the method that i said didn't work for me and just so you can see for yourself if it does work for you because there's so many people on his site just saying thank you bro thank you it worked so great so i, I really don't know it shouldn't work but let me just show you real quick. So the first thing you need to do is extract FFmpeg. So I extracted the file to my desktop here and it's only going to take me like a minute to explain. So this is why I'm showing it to you so you can try it out for yourself. So I have a little list of commands here that I'm going to put on my description and you can just copy and paste one of these. So if you have an RTX, try this first one. NVIDIA users, try the second one, AMD the third one. So I'm just going to copy this. And then I'm going to put it into a text file into this folder, which I made this folder. It just says upscaler and let me delete the old one and 
delete this, delete this. So, all right. So I put the bad video here and I named it input, which is what you need to do. So open the text document. You could name it to whatever you want. I'm going to name it to anything just to show you. Then open it up and then paste that code in here. And so it's asking you here, enter your file path. So that's the first thing here. So the file path is the name of the folder, which is upscaler. Grab that, put that in here and make sure to leave a space between CD and your command because this is saying change directory to your upscaler folder. So next it's asking for the ffmpeg.exe. And so that is in the ffmpeg bin folder. That's this right here. So just right click on it and copy file to path and replace this right here with what you just copied. But one thing you need to do is erase those quotations that will break it. So do not include the quotations and that's it. You just file, save as, and then rename it to something.bat. So I'm going to name it something.bat. And that's it. So now you have that converter in there. But all it really does, in my opinion, it just kind of converts it to 4K resolution without upscaling it. So you just have a stretched out video. So let me show you the results here. So this is it. So this is the something.bat file. And there's our input, our, our video called input, which is what we need. Click on that. It does this. And then it spits out a file called output. So this is what the output looks like. And um, it's still pretty bad quality. You probably can't see it on your end, but I kind of just showed you real quick so you can try it out for yourself. So now let's get into the real way to do this for free. So there's a lot of ways to do it for paid, like in After Effects, but I mean, that thing costs a lot of money and uh, some of the plugins cost like a hundred bucks to $600. So I'm, <laughs> I don't really think that's an option if you're just gonna do one or two videos in 4K. All right, so let's jump into my upscale process. Yo! So the first thing we're gonna do is create a folder on the desktop. I'm gonna name that folder. We shall name it new folder. Very original, right? All right, so in that folder, we're gonna have two folders, one name input, and then the other name output. And you guessed it, right? Output. You can put this wherever you want, but I'm putting it on the desktop. So this is gonna save us time later. So now we're gonna go into VLC media player. So the first thing we're gonna do is click on tools, preferences, show settings all, and then now we're gonna scroll down to where it says video filters, and we're gonna click on the arrow next to filters. So we're not gonna click on filters just yet. We're going to click on the arrow next to it, which will pull down a few more options. And we want the option that says scene filter. I'm going to make a few changes here. So we want, so just make it look like this image format PNG image and width or image width and height is going to be negative one file name prefix is going to be empty. And then we want directory path path prefix. It's going to be the input folder that we just created. So here we go input folder, copy, and we're gonna put that right there in the directory path prefix. Cool, all right, so the next option, always write to file to the same file, just leave that unchecked. We don't need that. And last but not least is recording ratio. So we want this to be one because we want every single frame. We don't want to put 10, 10 would be every every 10 frames. So we want one to one, so one. And now we're gonna save it and then close it. VLC player wants to restart every time it makes a change. So just do that. And now we're gonna do pretty much the same thing almost. So tools, preferences, show settings all. But instead of clicking on the arrow this time, we're gonna click on filters. Cool, so filters, and now we're gonna Make sure that the scene video filter is checked. So I had a check mark, so I unchecked it real quick so I can show you guys that I'm check marking it. There you go. Make sure it's check marked, then click save. Then you're gonna reset again. Close VLC player, open it up, and now we wanna take the low quality video and just drag it in here. So this is my low quality video here. So it's that um the 256 because for 256 by 256 resolution. So this is the very low quality video. We're going to throw it into VLC player by dragging it into the player. And then it's just going to start playing and splicing. Check it out. So look at the input folder. It's getting filled up with a bunch of images. So we're going to have a few hundred images when it's done. So I mean, it's pretty quick. Pretty much when the video is over, I mean, all the pictures will be sliced. So now VLC player is a slicing machine. Every time you put something in there, it's going to slice it up. Just remember that because if you start watching a video in here, you're going to have millions of images. So make sure you uncheck mark that, uh, this one right here, preferences, all scene video filter, are you gonna have a lot of images on your computer? So just remember that. All right, so let's move on to the stable diffusion process, which is now we're gonna upscale and GFP GAN everything. So let's do that. All right, so let's open up stable diffusion and go into the extras tab. So the extras tab is right up here, click on extras, and then also make sure that uh, version 2.1 is check marked. So right here, yep, 2.1 is check marked. So that's good to go. So now I'm going to drag one of the 
bad images from the images that we splice in the input folder. And we're going to put it right in here. So I'm going to choose one where the model's looking straight at us. Make sure that the eyes aren't closed. And um, I think this one's a good one. All right, perfect. So we're going to try to fix one image first so we can get the settings right. So for the upscalers, I'm not going to choose any particular upscaler, but I'm going to check, click on scale to. And right now it's at 256, even though it says 512, that's what it's going to upscale to. We're going to put it to 2048. So that's a huge jump, 256 to 2048. That's uh, astronomical. So let's go down here and we're going to mess with the settings a little. So one thing to know about GFP GAN, this fixes the face. If you don't need to fix the face, just leave it alone. I'm going to put mine to 0.8. Um, just keep in mind, GFP GAN does an excellent job. Like if they're missing teeth or their eye, one eye is on the forehead, it will fix that. But the problem is, is that it also takes away some of the imperfections, like the little freckles on their face and the red cheeks and stuff like that. It's going to smooth it out. So just keep that in mind. And then I'm going to click crop to fit. And so it doesn't stretch it out or stretch it in. That's even a word. Then code former is another way to fix a face, which is, uh, less uh, intrusive as GFP GAN uh, has more natural results. Um, but we're going to put that up just a little bit. And then actually, so the weird thing is the slider, if you put it all the way up, it has a minimum effect. <laughs> so that's kind of the opposite of what you expect. But I'm going to put it at 0.9. I don't want too much. I really just want the upscale but I will add some GFP GAN to the, to the mix. If you did a TPSM, the thin plate spline motion modeling, you might have to put GFP GAN all the way up if there's a bunch of artifacts and weird things on their face. So, all right, or if their eyes are crooked. All right, there we go. Now let's generate this one to see what it looks like. And if it looks good, which it does, look at that, that's clean. So we can keep that and then we will we'll use these settings. So all we gotta do now is click on where it says here, batch from directory. And we just need to choose those two directories that we made. So the first one is the input directory, which we already know where that is. So on our desktop here, new folder, we're going to click on the input, copy that address and put it into the input directory. Then now we're going to go to the output directory, new folder, output directory, copy that address. And then we're going to put it in the output directory. Who would have guessed, right? All right. So all the settings are already set to what we set when we tested the single image. So all we got to do now is click generate and watch it generate. So I'm going to put this here so we can look at it while it generates and then click generate and boom. This will take about, I, I don't know, give or take five minutes. Uh, I'll let you know when it's done. One thing I forgot to mention is that it's not really going to show you any progress. It's just going to say loading and it's not even going to sit in the actual stable diffusion like it usually does. It's actually only going to show you the progress when it's completely done. And also there's no interrupt button. So if you really need to cancel it, you have to hold control and press C twice to cancel it. I mean, you could just close it, but I'd, I'd feel safer kind of uh, using the control C twice. You don't want anything random, like kind of just going on in your memory. So you want to make sure you, you close it out. But one way to know that it is working is to actually look in your output directory. So let's look in the output directory now, and you could see here that images are being created. So these are all the clean images and look how nice those images are. So that's a pretty, I mean, coming from 256 to this, I mean, that's pretty amazing. You notice her teeth was fixed a little bit because of the GFP GAN, but it's pretty nice. Uh, so there's some pretty good results and this is going to make a pretty good animation. As you can see, we're at 73 now, 74, 75. So it's pretty much like every second that it's making uh, an image. So we have how many images? 169, so 169 seconds. All right, so this is Krita. This is Sparta! And if you can't tell already on the right here, this is a stable diffusion. So I can actually run stable diffusion image to image. I can upscale through here. Uh, so it's pretty cool. So I can use that just directly through this app. Before we get started, you see down here, there's an animation timeline and onion skin. So let's get it set up so yours looks like mine. So go to settings. Then go to dockers make sure that animation timeline is checked as well as onion skin so mine's grayed out but yours won't be so go ahead and click that and you can see this is the koi plugin for stable diffusion uh, if you're interested in that check out a youtuber named koi boy and search koi plugin and that's how to install stable diffusion on this all right next so we're going to go into file and go to import animation frames and if you notice right now it's actually grayed out so there's one little thing here we need to do to make this not grayed out so go to your output put folder and just go ahead and grab the first image and drop it into the, the app. Just drag it right into the middle there. And then you'll notice now that it's now available. Yay. Import animation frame. So go ahead and click on that. 
And now we're gonna have to add all the pictures in our output folder. So go click on add images. And now this is the output folder. Just press control A uh, to select everything and then open. There we go. Now it has every folder in here. Excuse me, every image, then click OK. As you can see, it's adding down here at the bottom. You can see also at the top here, you'll see uh, the size of it. So this is a pretty big file for a very short video. So it's only 168 frames, which is like going to be like 20 seconds, maybe 10 seconds. And it's already like 2.7 gigs. So really, you want to be careful if you're really cognizant about how big it big the files are based on your bandwidth and how much you have available. Just uh, just keep that in mind. <laughs> it does a good job at upscaling, but it also does a good job at like spending your bandwidth. So so just uh, be aware of that. All right, so now that it's in here, I mean, it's still loading because you see this little thing, but if you click on play, you can see the animation now. There you go. All right, there it is. But we actually need this in a file, right? So let's get, let's talk about that. So we'll actually need to go to file again and click on render animation. So we're gonna click on video for the radio button here. And then the width is 2048 by 2048. So that's already correct. If you did a smaller video or resolution, make sure you set it to whatever that is. And now for FFmpeg and video options, we actually need to uh, choose the, we need to choose the location the FFmpeg is in. So go ahead and click on that. And it's in your FFmpeg folder uh, bin. So in your bin folder, go ahead and go in there and then FFmpeg.exe and that's it. You just click on that and then video location, this is where it's gonna spit it out. So let's just put it inside our new folder. So new folder, there we go. That's the one that we created at the beginning of this. We're just gonna spit it out right there in the center and um, you can name this whatever you want. So I'm gonna put test one and save and then press okay. Uh, we don't have in any audio, but you could include the audio and press okay. There you see it's saving the frame. So uh, let's go into that folder and see what we got here new folder. So one thing you'll notice that it's creating a lot of frames. Don't get scared. It's actually that's just temporary unless the process like gets interrupted. So you see here it consolidated into one file, which is the video. So clicked on the video and look at it. It looks pretty nice. So this is the quality you can expect from this uh, this method. And this is a very short video. So it just expect for a one minute video, you're going to spend a lot more bandwidth and it's going to be a lot bigger. So just keep that in mind uh, when you decide to choose what resolution you want to go with. But that's it. If you thought this was helpful and this was something that you couldn't find anywhere else, uh, go ahead and click the like button so you can share this with other people. I actually did this already. I had a video on this about two months ago. And the only difference is we're cho choosing the upscaling during the stable diffusion process rather than image to image. But it was essentially the same exact tutorial. So if you did that a few months ago, you probably would already know how to do this. But uh, I just did it the entire thing to show you guys. You can use it for this purpose too. Uh, to clean up your videos. So there's a lot of paid options out there, but they're like hundreds of dollars. They're not just like a little bit of money. So there's some as cheap as $20 a month, but I mean, that's pretty, that's a pretty steep price to pay for just a regular upscale. All right, my final thoughts on all the different methods. So the first method, the FFmpeg, where you created a bat file to make a converter, that that doesn't work. I mean, I, I showed you real quick because it only takes a minute to try it out. So you can try it out and let me know in the comments if it worked for you, but I don't think it's going to work, but go ahead and try it out. Uh, what I can see it useful for is if you want to watch something on an ultra widescreen and you already have a pretty good quality video, but when you watch an ultra widescreen, it doesn't show the full thing. So that's the only reason why I would think you would want to stretch a video, but I'm really not sure, but it doesn't really work, even though a lot of people swear it does. The upscaling method through stable diffusion using all the tools I showed you works pretty good, but the only problem is it's it does take up a lot of bandwidth and time, but uh, probably less time than some of the other free upscaling options out there. But it does a pretty good job, uh, especially if you're doing like the TPSM models that have artifacting, because you can add GFP GAN on it too. So I think that's really important when it comes to the thin plate spline mo motion models, because there's a lot of kind of weird oddities in there, which it can fix. However, what I recommend it for a 30 minute video or a one hour video, I I, I wouldn't. I would go with something like Video 2X if you really wanted to do a free option and do Video 2X probably twice. If you could, if it allows you, it really depends on what 
um, because there's a limitation on what kind of resolution you can have. If you were going to do this full time and do it more often, um, I would go with a paid option. Actually, Topaz is probably the cheapest with $20 and Adobe After Effects. I think you can get a plug in for as cheap as 50 bucks, but that's not cheap. So <laughs> there's uh, there's some and it doesn't produce as good quality as the other more expensive plugins, which are like 100 to $600, which is insane for an upscaler. Um, so if you're just, you know, part time and you're just doing it for scientific purposes and you're just messing with TPSM and things like that, I would really just use this method for sure. If your video is under 10 minutes, use this method. Um, it's it's free and it works. So if you like this video, go ahead and leave a like uh, so other people can see it. If it's something that you haven't seen before, go ahead and leave a like too. All right. Thanks a lot. Bye. Thank you for watching and as always, sayonara, aloha, hafa day, adios, zaijian, alvida, anyang, pa al lam, and please come again.